And we're back. Here we are getting ready for the varsity match of the boys for the showdown with Argus Dragons versus the Elkhart Christian Academy Eagles. And here we are on the boys' side. Let's see if we got some names. It doesn't look like I've got the roster, so we're just going to wing it because pretty much that's like we what what we like to do around here. But then again, here comes Steve Stricker showing up slowly. All right, so yes, he is being fashionable without the fashion. All right, getting ready here. We're getting set. Where are we at? Okay, well, the boys teams are, are walking out. out. Yep. Getting ready to go. Did we determine what the records were? Um, Argus and on the thing. All right, varsity boys. Okay, Argus is zero zero and one, and, and Elkhart Christian is two, two and zero. Oh. Uh, looks like Elkhart Christian won four nothing versus Lakeland, and five to two versus Victory Christian. And of course, the boys tied Warsaw here in their home opener last Tuesday, four to four. And a thriller of a game. As I said on the uh, social media, said instant classic. Yeah, it was definitely a good game for the boys. Number zero mm -hmm. zero, Caden Schrock. Number. All right, here we go. Zero zero. All right. Zero zero. The goalkeeper, Tayton Schrock. Number five, Evan Hartman. Sophomore midfielder, number seven, Riley Brown. Riley Brown, number seven. Junior midfielder, number eight, Joshua Meek. Number eight, Joshua Meek. Junior midfielder, number nine, Taraku Freeland. Taraku Freeland, number nine. Senior midfielder, number 18, Caleb, Caleb Walters. Number 18, Caleb Walters. Senior defender, number 21, Nathan Carlick. Number 21. Nathan junior Carlick. Defender, junior, number 24, Evan Jermaine. Evan Jermaine. Jermaine. Jermaine Schmick? I don't know. Jackson They're all Jackson. flipping out and laughing. Senior defender, Jackson number 30, Ben Kinter. Number 30, Ben Kintner. And for your August Dragons. Senior goalkeeper, number 79. Number Kyle 79, Fishburn. Kyle Fishburn. Sophomore midfielder, number five. Number Lucas five, Lucas Vanderweel. Vanderweel. Senior midfielder, number seven, Vincent Stone. Number seven, Vincent Stone. Senior midfielder, number eight, Travis Number eight, Tanner. Travis Tanner. Senior defender, number nine, nine Zach, Zach Trump. Freshman number 10. Forward, number 10, Owen Nifong. Owen Nifong. Number 11, midfielder, Jonah Osborne. 11, Jonah Osborne. Sophomore defender, number 12, 12 Tim Almeyer. Almeyer. Senior midfielder, number 14, Tyler Betts. Number 14, Tyler Betts. Senior defender, number 16, number 16. Evan Johnson. Senior midfielder, number 23, Dylan Ballinger. Number 23, Dylan Ballinger. So we got Josh Overmeyer in the center. Ashley Bowden, Jerry Chisholm as ARs. All right, so recap here. We're at Argus High School, Eugene Snyder Field. We're getting ready to go for Argus Dragons Boys Action versus Elkhart Christian Academy. We are on the RTC4.com network, and I'd like to thank our sponsors. we got the Zone Sports Complex of Northern Indiana, RTC Fiber Communications, In Stitches and Signs, First Federal Savings Bank, CNS Outdoor, CNS Automotive, Blue Dragon Taekwondo, H&H &H Contracting, and Hereford Home Inspections. 
And we're going to be adding to that list here shortly. I got the package from Scott Sager, who I just can't say enough about what Scott's done for us here in this short period of time. We've been with RTC. Uh, greatly appreciate all the help that RTC and Scott have gave us. And we're getting ready to go out and start doing some marketing work to get some advertisers, some more people on board, and helping uh, sponsor these broadcasts. Uh, we've got uh, cameramen. Chris Fishburn, Josh Carter, Colin O'Dell, and Randy Stearns is out on the field or on the sideline right now for our main camera guys. And we are underway here from Argus. All right. Throw in for ECA here quickly down the field. Thrown in. Cleared out, and it's going to be a corner kick for ECA. ECA corner. I couldn't find you at break. I was going to get you something since you bought me a root beer float, but luckily I couldn't find you, so I saved my money. <laughs> we'll get you at halftime. A nice corner, and here's going to be a settle, and looks like it might be a shot. A lot of hands <laughs> there between both squads. And Tim Almeyer brings out the ball. Puts it up. It's Vanderwill, back of the foot. Vanderwill ends up with it, and he's going to be called there. Yep, some handwork there by Vanderwill gets called. Mm -hmm. Quickly, ECA kicks it ahead. And Bounder kicks it out. Travis Tanner to Nifong. Nifong looks. Gives a good through ball, and it's intercepted. Nifon comes back through, and now is a through ball to Stone. Stone's got a 1v1, and he's going far post, and that's yeah, a goal for Stone. Right. Assist Great off run. Nifong. That's going to open up the scoring at 38-30. Uh, Nifong like with the pass up to Stone for the assist. Tremendous. <clears throat> so 38-30 quickly into the game, and that's a Stone goal off of a Nifong assist. So there it was, first touch for the game, really. Uh, first shot on frame, and it's a goal. And Johnson hits it up. Nifong, or Nifong misses, or Stone tried to get the header. And here comes Zach Trump, and he puts it up the line. Good turn out of Osborne. That's a nice little settle. Good turn, back foot reception. Betts gives it up. Tanner. Ball's a little bit far in front. Tanner with a good stick. Great tackle out of Travis Tanner. Puts the ball forward to Vanderwill. Vanderwill is off sides. You can't. <clears throat> you can't camp and wait for the pass. You got to keep moving. Beautiful night here at Eugene Snyder Field. The sun's just a little bit over the trees still. Probably about 75 degrees right now yep. and low, low humidity. humidity. Ooh, loving yes. it. This is soccer weather. Actually, if it dropped about 20 more degrees, it'd be perfect soccer weather. Nice, brisk, make you run and feel real into it, breathe in that cold air, and that's what you really live for. Good ball from ECA up the line. Uh, over the past couple seasons, ECA has really improved. And you like to see a good through ball from Stone up to Vanderwell. Vanderwell looks, gets cut back in. Chips across, and Nifong's going to make his long run. He's going to keep it in, and it's going to say it was out of bounds. <laughs> I did not look it up, but somebody said they went to PKs last year. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I can't remember for sure. But uh, throw in. See if I can dig that up for you. Nice run through out of Nifong. Ball's back in the middle. Oz Vanderwill has it. <coughs> Ball's intercepted by Osborne. Hit too far in front. And it's going to go wide, and it's going to be a throw in for the Dragons. Yeah. 
Head ball, Nifong up to Vanderbilt, can't get to it. Here comes Zach Trump, runs through it. <laughs> Trump has it, goes wide. Gives a good through ball and just intercepted. Dragon's playing a little bit direct. Ballinger with a nice head ball back. Up to Nifong. Nifong looks, cuts, and he's going to be under pressure. Yeah, I show. There's going to be a foul. Five to five, two overtime win for Argus. So that would be PKs. PKs, yeah. Yeah. So tough game for the Dragons up at Elkhart last year. And we're 35 24 left in the first half. It's 1 0. Argus with the advantage. Ball's up and in. Well, I think it's a conference game. I don't know if they go on or they stop it or what, but. It must be if it's a conference game. They must I don't know. keep going. I can't remember. It's been. There's a good through ball. Stone's going to run past them all. He's got the wow. wheels. <laughs> and his heavy touch. Uh, and he's going to want that back. That's... He literally just takes off and leaves them. And he's not going to be happy with that first touch. That heavy touch is a mistake you don't see Vinny make very often. But that uh, speed amazes me still. I just I've seen him. For three years now, four years, you can see it change. It's gotten he's he's gained a step and a half from where he was his freshman year. That's for sure. And now he just goes around and he's going to split them. Forty-five back, the back and there's there an assist out of Vanderweel. Is that Nifong? No, nope, Vanderweel scores Vanderweel. it. It's a right. great assist. At Stone. So he did the exact same play against Warsaw with Ballinger in the middle, split two defenders, went straight to the end line, and then 45 back where the team was waiting on him, and just a nice little touch in the goal. Good little play out of Stone and an absolute nice directional finish from Vanderweel. So 34-25, that's a Vanderweel goal off of a Stone assist. The yeah. score is 2-0 now, Argus with the advantage. And uh, you, know, you get used to hearing the same names over and over throughout the games. Uh, you see it in basketball. You see it out here in soccer. And, uh, you know, it's kind of nice because it's on both boys and girls. Lots of families are definitely into the sports as a whole unit. And uh, it pays dividends, and you can see it. Ball's up. Here comes Vanderweel. We had a sub, and I'm not sure. Oh, Tanner come out. Chino came in. <clears throat> and there's a long throw from Ballinger, and here he comes again. And Ballinger with the long throw, Stone misses with the touch, and it's a tap out from the keeper. Nifong has it, kicks it square to Betts. Betts with the shot, and it's way off. That one would have been good for three. On well, the field, not on a pitch, though. I don't know, because it would have been off to the side. It would have been wide. Uh, Finkel shanks it. <laughs> Laces out. Laces out for bets. <laughs> oh, boy. Have our little uh, Ace Ventura reference there. <laughs> Chino with the quick throw. Here comes Vanderwill. Chips him, and it's going to not be saved. It's out of bounds for a goal kick for Elkhart. Well, we did it in the girls' game. Give a shout out to your uh, your sister and your oh, nephew. Yeah, yeah, my sister and my nephew Alex, and my sister Laura sharing birthday today. Your brother set out in Kansas sharing his birthday also. Here's a nice run, and it's going to be a save. It's going to be a goal kick, a corner kick, and a nice little run and kind of uh, Osborne and. Nifong kind of got in the way of each other a little bit, but uh, they both had the same attention. I want to score. <laughs> now Alex is going to Ancilla, right? Alex is playing at Ancilla for soccer. Joseph is playing at Ancilla. Okay. So And uh, Spencer is playing at Ancilla. So, yeah, we got the uh, three Argus connection right there, and then you got Joey as a JV coach. So have they had any contests yet? Uh, no, not yet. Nothing yet? Not, nothing yet. I think the varsity had a scrimmage game the other day. Okay. Sam Almeyer runs through, and they lose the ball, and here comes the throw in for the Dragons. Yeah. 
I think if we're lucky on Thursday, we might have a guest appearance towards the end of the game. Uh, Ted Hayden said he was going to venture down this way and maybe come up into the booth and a guest get a little interview. That's more from of a him. nuisance than a guest. <laughs> well, I was trying to be nice because I haven't got him to sign up yet. <laughs> Wait until I get his money. There's a ball wide to Osborne, and that's just going to be way wide. And we're going to drop uh, McKenna off. They're having tryouts for a fourth and fifth grade girls travel team at seven o'clock on Thursday. As long as it doesn't interfere with travel soccer, you, uh, I'd say it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> uh huh. He'll work around it. He said so. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of big things. We talked a little bit in the girls' game about yep. what's going on up there. They got that. They've got a league coming up for pre-K, K, first and second graders. That'll be com coming up here shortly. Little dribblers. Yep. So a lot of a lot of good things. Besides, they've got a huge program going on now. They got the Hoop Stars from South Bend. Yep. Part of their travel program. So. A lot of great things going on up at the zone and, and your side of things with the soccer. Uh, a lot of exciting things. When breaking ground in September? September 6th, I think, is the actual groundbreaking. And they said it'll be open January 5th or 6th, somewhere right around that area. F open and option of running, full bore. Good play out of both teams there. A nice hustle and good battle. And uh, they go through it. Here's Vinny Stone. And it's a nice clear foul of number 30 for the defense. Uh, ben Kintner, he clears it out to keep Stone from uh, having a chance. Yeah, he had to make a pretty traumatic play there just to get it out of there. And nice job there by the defender. Uh, let's see where Stone goes. He loves to hide that back corner, and here comes Chino's with the ball. Nice corner from and Dylan Chino. Dylan Bounder with the head, oh. and it goes to the keeper with a nice save. Perfect distance, maybe a little bit far from the goal, but uh, good, good corner there by Chino. Yeah, uh, and, and I've talked about it before. Dylan Ballinger has a magnet when it comes to the head ball, and he put it right on and right low and hard and on frame. So here's a ball wide. Great ball to Osborne. Bets with a nice pass to Osborne, and the defense gets it away and kicks it for a uh, throw in for the Dragons. So we've got about 11 and a half minutes gone. 28 40 left to go. 2 0 Argus with the lead. Trump, Johnson, Johnson up to Nifong. Nifong looks, turns. He's got pressure, puts it on Betts with a nice shielding turn over to Tim Almeyer. Almeyer goes, puts it up to Stone. Stone looks. Chino camps, comes back. Stone, through ball, up to Vanderweel. Nice overlapping run out of Vanderweel. Here's a chip and a nice sliding pass, and it was going to be corner. corner kick. Yep. And as you can see, Stone likes to migrate to that back post. It's kind of a forgotten post compared to the middle of the field. Leaves that attention to go up front there. And here it comes. Ballinger, header, puts it back in the center of the field for play. Osborne over to Chino. Chino looks and puts it back in. And there's a oh, header by Nifong, oh. and it's just off the crossbar. What a header. And the goalie gets just a touch off the crossbar and keeps it out. And here comes Betts. Betts goes through it. Betts is tackled, and it's a good tackle. That was a beautiful header by Nifong on that yeah, kick. Yeah, that was a great, great almost, header. Almost resembled a corner kick again there by Chino, mm -hmm. and uh, just off the top post. Well, I tell you what, ECA is not going to go down with a fight, and they are working super hard, and there's some physicality going on. But from what I see, people are using bodies correctly. They're really working hard, and there's nothing wrong with good – quality aggressive play uh it's when the hands come up and the elbows and that's when it starts to get a little cheeky and uh chippy yeah that's the one thing i've you know the more i get into the soccer and stuff you you can get a little bit you know you physical can, you, you can, can. Get physical and it can it's legal if you do it right like yep. you said so i still don't know that i would have done it when i was in school but uh it's See right there that's a good up. shielding play and he he knocks Nifong off the ball, but since he went directly into Nifong and not for the ball, that's when it's called. Mm -hmm. Ballinger going to chip it up. Gives it right over to Osborne. Osborne sees the back foot. Oh, and a nice defensive play. A turn. Good little movement out of East Elkhart and up stumps Trump to get the ball back. Now Osborne. Stone looks. 
fakes. The ECA kicks it through. Stone settles. Gives it to Chino, and that's going to be too far, and the keeper's coming out off the line. You've talked about that heavy touch from Chino a few times, and it looks like he got it there again. Yeah, Chino is not the fastest. He's not a sprint player. He's a tactical and technical player. So he wants the ball played to his feet, and that's where he's going to be the most uh, effective, and it's going to do him the best. Ball's up, and Bounder's going to tap it. He has it, and it's uh, going to stay ECA. And then field just seems to Trump go on and up. on and on on that far sideline. It's pretty wide over there. Yeah, it's a, it's a big field, and we talked about it before, and it's the way the Dragons like it. But as if you noticed, they still all migrate together, and it's a giant field, and they're all still right there, centrally located on basically that half of the field, a dead center in the middle of the pitch. And there's a foul from Vanderweel. And uh, once his arms move forward and shove the player forward, and that's going to make a call. Just moved under 25 minutes to go in the first half. 2-0, Argus with the early lead. And that's going to make it out of bounds, and it's going to be a Dragon's goal kick. Steve's going to have to lean down just a bit so you can see, but the uh, sun's in the eyes. And here's uh, Vanderwill. He's going to make a run, and he makes a nice little stop, turn, drops it back. Tanner. Tanner must have come back in, and I'm not sure who went out. Chino moved on to the right side. So Osborne went out, and Tanner came back in. So you got Tanner taking the corner. His left foot's going to swing it back out towards the center, away from the goal, and that's a beautiful ball. Stone looks, settles, takes a touch, and puts it back in the middle, and Ballinger's there, gets it up, and that's going to be back to the goalkeeper. Unselfish play out of Stone. He could have tried to slice that in on such a tight angle like a lot of strikers do, but he put it back in the middle for his teammates. There's nothing wrong with the, that. It's just unfortunate we didn't get a shot off. Very tough angle to get yep. that shot, but he didn't. Uh, Evan Johnson with the clear. Vanderwill hits it up. Tim with the saddle. Going to move the ball. Goes wide with the outstep and cuts back in. And it just about gets the ball through, and he battles through. He's going to make sure he gets it because he's got an engine. He keeps on running. Goes wide. Here comes Betts. Chips it up, and that's going to go out of play for throwing for Elkhart. Ball's back in, and nice little play out of Tanner. And there goes Betts. I like Betts has been really working hard this season. You can tell it. Vanderbilt has it on the side, cross and there's another corner for the Dragons. So we got Tanner for the corner with another out swinger. And it's way out. And Trumpy, oh, oh puts a one touch, it tries to chip the keeper and just gets it on top of the goal. Just didn't quite get it to drop enough to get underneath the par. So that's got to be, have you gotten kept track of the uh, corners for Argus? Uh, it's, I think it's our fourth corner already. Uh, that's... Third or fourth. I was going to say more around six or and seven. It's our fifth. Fifth corner. Fifth corner. We got an official, unofficial statistician down at the end. Giving me the high five, so I'm assuming that was five corners. Fishburn off the line. Going to receive it and have plenty of time to go wide over to Evan Johnson. Gives the ball to Stone. Stone waiting outside. Gives the ball back over to Johnson. You see how he was waiting out of bounds to give himself the most space. And when you get yourself the most space, it gives you plenty of time to make a play. And that's a great ball to Chino. Chino's going to make a run. He leaves it up to Vanderwill. Vanderwill loses oh. the touch. And what a save out of the keeper sliding out. Stone comes back in, cuts it in. He's going to shoot with his left, and that's not stopped. <laughs> it's a goal for Stone. 
Come Beautiful on. action that time by the Dragons. Unassisted goal by Stone again. He receives the ball back off the keeper, makes a touch with his right, sets it up for his left, and just curls it in. Golasso. What a shot. 3 0 now, 21 16. Stone with the unassisted goal. Yikes. And we talked about it, and there was a couple of uh, people that were asking about him from the uh, Elkhart area, and they, they said they'd heard some stuff, and they wanted to know if it was true. Well, so far, I think he's pretty much showed them, yeah, it's true, he can play. Definitely can play, and I'm looking forward to finding <laughs> out where he ends up because he's going to be able to play at a high level next year somewhere. Yeah, he's going, he's can go, he's going to have some options, and, uh, you know, Besides all that he's doing with basketball, second uh, leading steals for this tire state, even though he really seldom doesn't play a lot of basketball. He only plays during season. Uh, and then does all this for soccer and is tremendous. Besides that, he is a phenomenal student. So you can't go wrong with that when you have the brains to go along with the athleticism. Uh, and he's going to be upset with that. He didn't settle it. And, yeah, and as they say, he's got the hair to go with it. <laughs> Good little play, and that's going to be the Dragons. Nope, that's going to say Elkhart. We're approaching Stone's coming the, through. Approaching the halfway point here, the first half. 3-0, Argus with the lead right at 20 minutes to go. Ball first from half. Tanner to Chino. Chino looks. Chino's going to have to cut in. He's going to go wide with the left. Puts it back in, and there's going to be a shot, and it's going to be a goal. Who a goal got off that? of Osborne from Chino. Osborne. It bounced off the player, but uh, from you know from e Elkhart, he was swinging out. But it was the last touch from the shot was from Osborne, and it came from Chino. That's an Argus goal by Jonah Osborne, assisted by Chino Roke. And uh, Dragons are up four 0 and here comes a frustration shot just from uh, kickoff, and uh, that's not going to go well. Coach is going to say, hey, we, we don't play like that. We want to do something with it. All right, Elkhart's going to have a throw in. Chino has it. Gives a through ball to Osborne, but number 30 on that side. Ben Kentner has been working hard and preventing those easy ones to go through. Zach Trump makes a run up the middle. Tim Almar gets it. Official says play on. And substitute for Elkhart. <clears throat> Out comes Ben Kentner. Looks like uh, uh, Fletcher. <laughs> There's a long ball for Chino. He's got it. Keeper's coming out. And he's going to save it. It's, it's Garten. Garten, okay. Hmm. <laughs> Good ball to knife on from Stone. Nifong to Chino, back to Nifong. And, oh, and he just misses, and that's the difference. All you had to do is touch it near post and finish that as a good little run. Uh, but he went with a little bit of power, went far post when the uh, near post was open. <laughs> oh, I got Steve, immature Stricker, next to me. You're giggling. Stop had, giggling. We had a little misprint in the. All right. uh, so the sub was Fletcher Garten. Garten. Number 23 for Elkhart Christian. All right. The ball is chipped up. And here comes Elkhart with the attack. Uh, Osborne looks. And Chino's pointing like he wants a through ball, but Chino's not going to outrun that uh, player. He needs to realize that he needs to stop, check to, and play defeat and then do something with it. He doesn't have the wheels for a through ball. Tanner over to Nifong. That's a good little set. Nifong looks, fakes, gives it right back to Vanderwill. Vanderwill shot, and it's just wide. 
And you can see how uh, Stone has no problem moving wide. He's He doesn't need to be in the middle. He understands what's going on. He just moves wide, brings some defenders out. He's not uh, the atypical striker that's just me, 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 me. He uh, definitely uses his uh, assets to get the most for the team, and that's one thing you like to see from a coaching standpoint. Well, you know, from a basketball standpoint, oh, yeah. that's, you yeah. know, if somebody's hitting a lot of threes and, you know, they want to keep getting the ball, but they also know that if they get out of the Here way. Here comes Stone with the lead, and he toe pokes it in again with a one-touch toe poke with his left, runs through about four to beat him to the ball and taps it straight in. Kind of a wild ball off of a couple people. I would probably go unassisted. Not really sure on that. That's just one of those loose ones. And he took the initiative and could see it. So and we're toe poked call, it in with his left. We're going to call that unassisted stone at 16:27. That makes it 5-0 Argus. Uh, man, oh, man. So Stone with the first half hat trick and Plus an assist. An assist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not too bad. Uh, yeah. Nifong's got to run, and it gets tapped away, and it's going to be another corner for the Dragons. I think this is going to be the seventh, maybe the eighth. I'm not real sure. We'll look at our statisticians down there. Well, we had five, and I don't know that we've had Well, we any, had so. a couple outswingers from Tanner, and here's another one from Tanner. going to be an outswinger. And that's a nice ball. Dylan Ballinger's going to get up, and Stone just about gets a touch on it. Ballinger puts it to Stone. Stone misses, and here comes ECA. Fakes, turns, ball goes through. Here comes Trump. Trump with a block, and it's out of bounds. Throw in for ECA, and here's a sub. Now, if you notice, the uh, player coming in, out goes number 24, Evan. Magic, and here comes number 30, Ben Kentner. If you notice, he's wearing a headband, and that's not for looks or to keep his hair out of his eyes. That's a concussion headband. So he has had a bad concussion at one time or another, so now he wears that during the games to try to prevent another one. And if you notice on the girls' team for the Dragons, uh, Tia Freshour wears that same type of concussion headband. Well, you've seen a lot of things in the news. Yeah, that's a, yeah, concussions. Definitely from pro football, but obviously soccer, they've changed around the rules. Now the younger kids are not allowed to You have to, to be use, a certain age before yeah. you're allowed to head it and this and that. So they're trying to protect kids from injuries. There's some people for that. There's some people against it. When it comes to my personal views, if you teach them to head it right, they're less susceptible to injuries. And a lot of injuries from headers for concussion-wise basically come from kids colliding or hitting the ground, not from heading the ball, actually. So, mm, look like a swing there. Look like you kind of swung at him. So, there's a header. Osborne. Osborne has it. Looks. Misses, and out comes Kentner. He's he's cleared out about five or six over the game so far. So what did the what is the rule change on that? Where, where did they draw that line as far you, as headers go? Uh, if you are basically a U11 player or under, up to U12. So you basically, if you're 12 years old or under, you're not allowed to head the ball in the ISL. They don't want you teaching it. They don't want you this and that. And if they do it on purpose in the game, they're supposed to, the official's supposed to call it and give a free kick. But it's just one of those things that's a little different than what we're used to. I grew up and you grew up in the age of, you know, we used to juggle knives. And now, you know, everything's got a safety sheet <laughs> and, and the world's all bubble wrap. So for me, I'd like to see them be able to do it because you can teach them the right way so they don't get hurt when that situation comes. And it gets rid of that fear of heading the ball when they're younger and that's one thing that grows and it's hard to do is getting rid of that fear because it's not the easiest thing to watch a, a big object fly right at your head and not flinch you know it's just not a natural thing so but uh people still uh, go at home and they do it with their kids and that's you know that's fine 
It'll be a while, really, before we tell you know we can tell. Yeah, if it, any it does any effect or works, yeah. Kintner is going to outrun Osborne, and there it goes wide. And but Osborne's going to shield and get possession back, and then the ball is out of bounds. And that's going to go to. Well, I was going to. I thought it was going to go to Elkhart, but it goes to. Chino turns and looks and crosses without looking. You got to look before you pass and know where your teammates are. Stone taps it and ends up still getting over. Nice Trump or Olds with a nice stop. Olds makes a nice through ball to Chino. Chino tried to cross and it didn't make it to its target. Tanner has it. Nice play out of Johnson. Chino with the shot, and it's goal. Oh, nice shot from distance by Chino. Unassisted at 11-21. That is a 6-0 lead. Chino has a little good, pretty good game going on here. He's got an assist on the fourth goal, and he's got an unassisted goal for number six for the Argus Dragons. All right, so we got number 15. Gunner Morgan coming in. We got Crum coming in. And number number two. And then Randy, our cameraman, Stearns is in. Stones moved back, is playing defense with Ballinger. And there goes Crum. Crum's going to have a free break. He's going to chip, and it's going to be a nice shot and a good save from the keeper. Crum with the shot. Stone has it. Ball's loose. Here comes number five with the ball. Stone goes down and he takes it away. Stearns just about gets it. Ball's coming across. Betts takes it away. He splits through. There's Stone with the tackle. Stearns has it. Stearns goes. Looks. Makes through. Loses possession. Betts is going to battle to try to get it back. Stone tips it out, and it's a long play. Here comes Morgan, and the goalkeeper's going to receive it. Good hustle out of Morgan. Ball comes across, and that's a nice left foot. Here comes Oltz with a header, and up to Stern. Stern's going to make a break for it. Pets. Or Betts with a uh, foul, and here comes a free kick for Elkhart. Number seven, Riley, or Riley Brown tried to shield. Betts pulled him down. Now he's taking the free kick. He looks like he's going to try something. Uh, he might just try to go on frame. And nice hit, but it was low and hard. Stone deflects it, and Fishburne recovers it easily. Long ball. Tanner hits it up a wall, wall, too hard. And here comes a goal kick for ECA. We got a couple subs. Twenty four, number twenty four comes in. Evan Jamich. Is that it? All right. Sounds good. Ball's loose in the corner. Good turn. Gives the ball back. Here comes Vanderwill. Vanderwill puts it over and it's a little bit wild. And here comes Betts going to receive the ball. Gives it to Olds. Olds goes wise to Stearns. Misses the turn. Here's a nice little touch, and he's out of bounds. Throw in for Dragons. 
Ball's loose, goes back forward. Betts, Stone, chips it up, and now there's a little bit of kickball going on on the teams. Nice little play around Ballinger, and he's off sides, unfortunately, for ECA. He had a breakaway, but he was definitely off. The junior high girls are doing a port -a pit chicken on September 17th, and they're trying to get some new uniforms here for the 7th and 8th grade teams. So if you would like tickets, you can contact anybody that's a coach or player. Uh, the 5th grade girls and the 6th grade girls are also helping out. So something that you're interested in, you can always uh, message us on Twitter at Argus Sports. And we'll get you in touch with somebody that has tickets. Uh, I have tickets uh, as you well. You have tickets? I have tickets. I have tickets. We all have tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got seven minutes left to go in the first <laughs> half of this one. It's a 6 nothing <laughs> game. Argus with the lead. And we've got some subs coming in for Elkhart. All right. Number 11. T.J. Tice, and number two, uh, Bailey Petty. And for ECA, number two, Bailey Petty. Number Stone 11, clears it up, and there's a missed play, and here comes Crum. Morgan runs back, tries to get it. Vanderbilt can't locate it. Tanner, and the ball is out of bounds for a throw in. Morgan with a nice little cross in the middle, and here comes Betts. Betts chips it out to Stern. Stern's with a little bit of heavy touch, and out comes the keeper. Good idea. Good little touch, touch, and uh, just went too, uh, too far forward. Here comes Tanner. Gives a through ball, and unfortunately it's decept er, cut off from Elkhart. Crum. Crum's going to run through it. He's got him. Goes to goal. Puts it in a 45, and it's a brilliant pass out of Crum straight to Vanderweel and a nice goal. So that is that was a brilliant pass. Oh, my word. Nice little work. Crum takes it in, dishes it straight to that. You go straight to that near post. You make the defense of the goalie commit. 45 back. Your teammates, as long as they're where they need to be, simple touch in two times so far. We've seen that, and they both have been Really pretty goals. Good teamwork out of the Dragons. Four of the seven goals for the Dragons have been assisted. So, like you said, there's just been a tremendous job by all of them yep. working together. That one, a new pair. Crumb to Vanderweel. Vanderweel with the second goal in the night. And that makes it 7-0 with five minutes to go in the first half. Yeah. Well. We still got a full half of action yet to come. Action, 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 yeah, action. Well, we want to give uh, get well wishes for Mason Lineberry. He was involved in an automobile accident. Uh, we're not going to get into too much of the particulars, but he uh, has a couple of broken uh, vertebrae, so uh, they're, you know, it's just one of those things. They want to make sure everything's okay in C5 and C6, and we're just uh, we're just letting them know and uh, letting the Lineberry family we're thinking about them and uh, we keep our fingers crossed and the prayers coming. So make sure everybody, if you get a chance, uh, drop them a message. Uh, I'm sure he would be happy to see that uh, everybody's thinking about him. Uh, Mason and his whole family's been part of the uh, Argus school system for a long time. His mother is a graduate here in '89. And uh, his aunt from before that. So uh, we, we definitely want to keep our thoughts and prayers for uh, Mason uh, Lineberry. Um, uh, since he has been in an automobile accident the other day. So if you can, think about that. Send him, uh, send him a message. And we'll just make that best we can for him. So he's, uh, well, he's, he's doing okay but it, it was pretty scary there for a while which it always is when it comes to kids in an automobile accident especially uh with the family going through with uh, mariah and courtney uh demont so now they have uh, mason that's been in an accident so they have a very strong family oriented group so you like to see that everything goes well 
Here goes Betts. He comes through the end, and a nice sliding tackle. He keeps it out. Here's a chip in the middle, and Tanner has it and misses hits. Here comes Vanderwill. Comes off of him, and uh, ball's out of play, and it's going to be a dragon throw in. Like Tanner might have got his foot stuck in the grass a little bit on that shot. Just yeah. wasn't able to get full force Well, you, you can't say the grass is too long. The pitch is absolutely beautiful. Uh, we want to thank Troy Dunlap and uh, Todd Vanderwill and uh, Jeff Fishburn and everyone. Uh, or not Jeff or Fishburn. I'm sorry, Tim Fishburn for everyone that does the work on the fields. Uh, they do a tremendous job. Stone's going to outrun them for the defensive end and go around wide and turn it and go right back up. And here it comes. It makes a nice through ball and then gets cut off. So Good. Vanderwill runs through. Gives it a header to Gunnar Morgan. Gunnar Morgan's going to the thing. Here's the middle. And, oh, oh. Crummy takes a shot. And it's a beautiful save from the keeper. Oh, great ball in from Gunnar Morgan. Betts has it. Goes back. He's going to go wide. And he's taken out. And it's going to be a free kick for the Dragons. A beautiful night here at uh, Eugene Snyder Field. The sun just getting ready to go underneath the trees and to the uh, west side of the field. And it couldn't be nicer. Yep, so we got uh, Dylan Ballinger on the free kick. So he's asked for distance. You know, I'll have to wait for the whistle. And he waves him on. Here's a shot, and... Oh, and it's just wide. It curls to upper 90 and just goes out of bounds. Wow, what a shot. Minute and a half left in the first half here. 7 nil. Argus with the lead. Stearns with the foul. Randy. Randy getting a little too aggressive there on the play. Well, you know, just a little bit uh, unorthodox on that one. Kind of ran him over. He was in the old, uh, attack mode, and he didn't control his body very well. And here comes the Dragons, uh, definitely getting some fouls. We want to settle him down a bit. And uh, what some people might think is really rough, it just happens that it might be off a step or so, and it really looks worse than what it is. Randy gets the ball, knocks it away, and Stone has it, comes back with it. Gives a nice ball over to Betts, and it's cut off. And Olds, here it comes through. Is that a oh, handball? A handball or a push, and here comes a free kick for Elkhart. Well, let's see. This could be a really good goal-scoring opportunity. Number seven, Riley Brown has a quality touch. And it's into the wall. And the ball is free, and there's a corner kick. And that's going to do it. First half over. It's a 7 to nil score. Argus with the lead. So we started off the scoring at just 38-30 with a stone goal off of a knife-long assist. Followed by, at 34-25, a Vanderwill goal off of a stone assist. And then at 21-16, our third goal.